A very good evening to you. The pleasure is always mine having you join us on Newsline again this Sunday. Now remember, Newsline is your lens to Nigeria and beyond, and of course your regular Sunday Sunday tonic. I am Claire Adilabu Abdul Razak, your pilot. As we enter into the very vibrant and dynamic month of June, the heart of Nigeria's wet season, Newsline will bring to you rejuvenating perspectives and insights on current stories that are shaping our world. Now, innovation is blooming in the most unexpected places in Nigeria. And tonight, Newsline will feature an extraordinary young Nigerian whose inventive spirit is attracting Newsline cameras. Also featuring tonight, our correspondent and covers the incredible talent of a 10-year-old who is proving that age is no barrier to extraordinary talent. And from the farm to the table, tonight, Newsline will immerse you in a culinary celebration like no other at the recent food festival here in Abuja. And we also have a report on Nigerian staple. Mm, you don't want to know. A ah, very humble necessity that has been saving Nigerians for hundreds of years is now the center of a bustling demand. And Newsline will uncover the fascinating journey of Gary. <laughs> yes, I said Gary, now a hot cake in Nigeria. Also tonight on the line, the skies of Asaba in Delta State is serene and somber. As a monumental figure, a revered monarch is buried. Newsline will take you through the poignant and powerful farewell to this extraordinary ruler. So, June is a special month, not because personally it marks my day, but it is also the birth month of commercial broadcasting that's about 104 years ago. And so with charm, captivating smiles, I invite you once again to join us on Newsline. And speaking of energy and vibrancy, let's now turn to our own very uncrowned queen, Elizabeth. And uh, Lizzie, they say broadcasters are born in June. Did you know that? Well, Claire, uh, this is the much I know that um, there are interesting similarities uh, between uh, essential requirements of a broadcaster and personality traits of those born in the month of June. But, mind you, there is no scientific evidence linking birth month to personality traits. Mm -hmm. Just so you know, we have the best broadcasters at the NTA. Mm -mm -mm. Thank you so much for <laughs> joining us on the news segment. We begin with the proposed industrial action. Uh, the meeting between the leadership of the National Assembly and the organized labor as part of efforts to avert the planned nationwide strike has ended. President of the Senate, Godswill Lakpabu, who, who presided over the meeting, urged labor to show understanding, assuring that the National Assembly would do all it can to see that a compromise is arrived at. very glad to have something that is workable. But we must also be mindful of collateral damage. I don't want us to, in the course of trying to arrive at a, a minimum. The one thing that this country and this government can do to eliminate corruption in the long run is to embrace living wage. There is no two ways about it. But we should also be mindful that the mistakes of several food on the table enough to take care of my basics. Held behind closed doors, had in attendance ministers of key ministries, the president of NLC, Joe Ajero, and that of TUC, Comrade Festus Osifo. Details of the outcome will be brought to you subsequently. Meanwhile, the federal government has advised labor leaders to return to the negotiation table to prevent imposing hardship on Nigerians with the proposed nationwide industrial action by the organized labor. The Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Latif Agbemi, SAN, made the declaration in a letter to the two trade centers in the country. 
He noted that the declaration of industrial action without the 15 days notice as provided by the extant law brought to question the legitimacy of the proposed action. Latifagwimi SN called the attention of the leadership of the two labor centers to the binding effects of the interim injunctive order of the National Industrial Court issued on 5th of June 2023 on all parties in the matter and stressed the need for the industrial unions to pursue their cause within the ambit of the law. Now to security matters, the remaining eight out of the kidnapped students of Confluence University of Science and Technology or Shara Kogi State have been rescued. The government of Kogi State, while expressing gratitude to President Bola Tinobu for directing the mobilization of resources to ensure the rescue of the kidnapped students, says it will continue to strengthen the security architecture of the state and pay attention to the Safe School Initiative to ensure that no child is deprived of the right to education. The state government also urges Kogi residents to always share intelligence with security agencies to defeat banditry, kidnapping and any form of criminality in their states. Now, the federal government is considering merging the two control and command centers domiciled with the Nigerian Navy and that being managed by the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency, NAMASA. The Minister of State for Defense, Bail Matawali, gave the hint while assessing the centers in Lagos. Michael Olale reports. The C4I Center is a vital component of the Deep Blue Platform vested with the responsibility of overseeing activities within the country's exclusive economic zone. And as the name suggests, it is the eyes at sea. The command, control, communication, computer and intelligence system unit is powered by unmanned area vehicles, UAVs, that provide real-time information about suspicious vessels. This particular technology has same capabilities with the Navy's Falcon eyes. Now, the minister's visit to this center is not for sightseeing, but to deepen strategic partnership that we effectively put the two technologies to use in the interest of security, trade, and economic prosperity. If the Polka I and C4I are communicating, so if we have any crisis, one of them should communicate to each other. They should be able uh, to push out the criminals in the uh, backwater and the, in the high sea. This initiative, lauded by stakeholders, is the prelude to deepening collaboration between the MASA and the Navy in the quest at increasing surveillance at sea. C4I is on its own, it's a very capable setup. And the Falcon safety, but when we come back together, I know we are going to get it better than what we used to do before. We actually do have a lot of vessels, you know, that are on our waterways that are going unchecked. But then with this collaboration with um, Nigerian Navy and NIMASA, I'm sure that would improve a lot. YK players look forward to more innovative ideas that will advance the future of trade in the course of securing the maritime space. They are hopeful that this move, when operational, will make the nation's water forbidden for crimes. In Lagos, Michael Olaleye, NT News. And from maritime matters, we now move to oil exploration. The quest for own states to become an oil producing state has received a boost. As the federal government says, all is set for the exploration of oil and gas in the gateway states. Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Oil, Heineken Lopubiri, stated this when he led the federal government delegation to the state on a fact finding mission to ascertain the oil status of the state. Lekon Agonde brings us details. Of state for Petroleum Resources, Hoyle, Henikin Lopobiri, who led the delegation, acknowledges that the quest by the federal government to shore up its revenue through the discovery of mineral resources, including oil, in potential oil producing states brought the delegation to Ogun State. He notes that Ogun State has always been part of the Dahomey Basin Corridor with high deposits of mineral resources including hydrocarbon. The government decided that we are going to resume 
you know, exploration in the different, you know, uh, basins, we decided to come to Ogun State to reassure the people of Ogun State that we have very high potentials of, you know, discoveries here. And that's why we're here. Our presence here, you know, uh, underscores the, the seriousness the federal government attaches to, you know, the exploration activities that we want to carry out. This is a region of the country that provides ease of access, low entry and operating costs, a safe and welcoming community, and of course a very active state government support and participation. The Dahomey Basin Corridor stretches from Ogun through Delta, Eldo and Ondo states, which the delegation intends to cover in the course of this national assignment. In Abe Okuta, Lekon Agmode, NTA News. Meanwhile, Nigeria's dedication to the Declaration of Corporation DOC has again been reiterated by the Minister for State Petroleum Resources Oil, Heineken Lokoberi, at the 37th OPEC and OPEC Plus ministerial meeting. The minister who joined the hybrid meeting emphasized Nigeria's continued compliance with production adjustments designed to stabilize the global oil markets. Lokoberi says Nigeria remains unwavering in its commitment to the agreement made under the Declaration of Cooperation. Adherence to the production adjustments, the minister acknowledged, is crucial to maintaining market balance and supporting global efforts towards sustainable oil market stability. The discussions are the ministerial meeting reaffirmed the collective efforts of OPEC and non-OPEC members to achieve sustainable oil market stability. Away from oil and gas, President Bola Tinobu has called for a united front towards overcoming the challenges facing the country. He said this in a message during the installation of a new president of the Evangelical Church Winning All, Equa, Reverend Job Ayuba Bagat Malam in Jos. Indiang and Yaba Yang tells us more. It is the end of an era and the beginning of another as the 12th Equa president takes over leadership, marking a transition period for the church. President Tinubu represented, acknowledged the pivotal role of the church in the growth and development of the nation, urging the new Equa president to strive for a more united and prosperous church and nation. So the message should be, remain united, focus enough to evangelize and have the spiritual authority to be able to win souls for the kingdom. Assuming the mantle of leadership, the new Equa president, Reverend Job Ayuba Bagad Malam, while appreciating the significant growth of Equa during the tenure of his predecessor, says the current leadership will implement key strategies that will ensure the sustainability of gains recorded. He also reaffirmed his commitment to building strong collaboration with government at all levels and the body of Christ, even as the former president recognizes the support and successes recorded during his tenure as the 11th Equa president. I am committed to establishing open lines of communication and building productive relationship with government officials by engaging in constructive dialogue and mutual cooperation, we can address shared challenges. Governor Caleb Mutfang and other distinguished personalities noted the contributions of Equa to human capital development, calling on the new leadership to take bold steps to ensure unity of the church, which is critical to the development of the nation. When we are united around the values and virtues of Christ, it is easier for us to see ourselves as members one of another. Go back to Tor 1721, let them be one, let one. You know, this responsibility God has given him is never an easy one. It requires wisdom from above. And people are really praying for his own success. The new Equa president, who hails from Kaduna State, began his pastoral work in 1980 in Jos, in the and the and to bring us up to speed on the meeting between the national leadership of the National Assembly and the organized labor is Lami Ali. Uh, Lami, thank you for joining us on the news. And could you please bring us up to speed on the meeting? Yes, sir. Thank you very much, 
operations across the country. Salwa Khalili Bryan reports. But let's move on. The National Drug Law Enforcement Agency has intercepted codeine syrups and loud consignments worth more than 2 billion naira in Lagos and Port Harcourt. Arrested a 70-year-old grandpa among others for alleged drug offences during its weekly operations across the country. Salwa Khalili Brian reports. A large consignment of codeine-based syrup and loud, a synthetic strain of cannabis worth more than 2 billion naira have been intercepted at the Port Harcourt Seaport, One, and the Murtala Mohammed International Airport, Ikeja, by operatives of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA. At the Lagos Airport, NDLEA officers, with the cooperation of other security agencies on Friday, 31st May 2024, intercepted a large consignment of loud packed in eight suite cases containing 320 parcels with a total weight of 164.50 kg of the strong psychoactive substance from Canada. At the Port Harcourt Ports Complex, NDLEA operatives intercepted a container with 175,000 bottles of the opioids worth more than 1.2 billion naira in street value. In Abuja, a 25-year-old lady was arrested with 1 kilogram methamphetamine by NDLEA operatives on patrol along Kwali Gwagwalada Expressway while traveling in a commercial bus from Lagos to Yola, Adama State. In the same vein, operatives in Nasara State napped a 70-year-old grandfather with 57.2 kg cannabis in Lafia, the state capital. Others were needed in Ekiti and Katsina State for different alleged drug offenses. In Abuja, Salwakalil Ibrahim, NTA News. For 68 years and counting, the Nigerian Navy has continued to protect the nation's maritime domain and its other assets across the Gulf of Guinea. And to appreciate its personnel at the 68th anniversary of the Navy, the Chief of Naval Staff Vice Admiral Emmanuel Ogala presented 10 utility vehicles to diligent and dedicated naval warrant officers for their doggedness in carrying out their duties. Lynn Lenike reports. The repelling exercise of the Nigerian Navy and lowering of the floods signals the end of the week-long activities marking 68 years of Nigerian Navy's existence and her involvement in combating all forms of illegalities across the Gulf of Guinea to protecting the nation's critical assets. This year's ceremonial sunset had a twist where the Chief of Naval Staff, Vice Admiral Emmanuel Ogala, presented utility vehicles to 10 naval warrant officers to further boost their morale. Then came the time for the officers to wine and dine with good music. Guest of Honor and Governor of Lagos State, represented by his deputy, Dr. Obafemi Hamzad, applauded the Navy for being tactical and combat ready at all times. Our country owes the Nigerian Navy a debt of gratitude for what you are doing for our country protecting our waterways, protecting all the maritime infrastructure, preventing piracy, preventing oil theft, and all sorts of things. 
Apart from taking a firm stand against all forms of maritime crimes, the leadership of the Navy applauded the President, Bola Tinubu's led administration, for supporting the Navy. Since 2022, with the tremendous effort of the Nigerian Navy and other security agencies, particularly the Nigerian Army and the Nigerian Air Force and the Nigerian Police, we've been able to work together and we have eliminated piracy in Nigerian waters. The climax of the event was the presentation of award of command at sea to deserving officers and spouses of past chiefs of naval staff. In Lagos, Lynn Lenake, NTA News. Next, some sporting stories. We now join the uh, will see reason call of the strike. We said earlier that you know paying this amount that Labour has asked for. It's like uh, paying a cumulative of uh, 9.5 trillion naira to only 1.2 million Nigerians. It's a country of over 200 million people, and others also deserve other service of government. We have roads to fix, we have hospitals to build, we have education system to, uh, to fix. Uh, the federal government is very sensitive to the demand of labor, but we also call on labor to see reason, to see reason and toy the part going to hit the call that the uh, leadership of the National Assembly uh, uh, you know, has made to them. We do believe and we sincerely hope that no one, no one uh, is interested in having a strike and industrial action at this point. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. That was the Minister of Information, Mohammed Idris, on deliberations at the meeting between the leadership of the National Assembly and the organized labor. And we apologize for the glitches experienced while he was actually briefing. And that's the new segment. Claire will be back with more reports after this break. Just stay with us.